Okay, praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Really quickly, we have Google Meets tonight. Today's Friday. We have it tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The code is R-A-O-U-B-O-F-M-V-I. And if you forget that, you can go to JesusDoers.com. Not we are, just JesusDoers.com, and you can see that information there. Um, you can also see what we're doing in Africa there. You can get Igor's World News there on the World Tab section. Um, I even have witnessing t-shirts if you want to get that. And when, just to let you know, when you get those witnessing t-shirts, it does squat for the ministry. It don't do nothing for me and nothing for the ministry. Um, I make nothing off of it. Zero. Maybe a, a buck, like one dollar or something. Not, nothing to talk about. Um, that's through so, another online thing. Those shirts are for you, okay, to wit, to use as a witnessing tool, okay? So all that's there, all right? And then don't forget this Sunday, we don't have Google Meets at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same code. And we have um, the Orthodox Jewish Old Testament Bible teacher, Avi, going to be coming in. And he's going to be talking about the, the high priest, the priest, the sin offerings and, you know, their duties at the temple, the temple, all that stuff. OK, and you're going to see what I told you yesterday, a superposition, how would God use that then to uh, show us what he was going to do with the Messiah. All right. Now, this right here. So come. He's very um, uh, looking forward to y'all being there and he's very much he's never done this with the group of christians before so we don't want to uh try to make him believe anything i've already been witnessing to him the lord is already working with him um so let god do his thing now okay but if you have questions about what he's teaching on then ask the questions you know because it's nothing no different than what jesus understands you know he he's the one that wrote it he's the word Okay, so let's get into this. This is to help you study. And also, you're going to see superpositions here. You're going to see Bible fulfillment here in the Old Testament and how Jesus fulfilled it in the New. He's the New Covenant. He is the New Covenant. Okay, so this is for you. I encourage you to do it. Um, there's a couple of you that may type the questions out. I appreciate that so much if you do. I'm, I can't do that. I ain't got enough room or time or storage space to do that. But you can pause the videos. If you do type it out, thank you ahead of time so much. I do see what you do and I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments and thank those of you helping our ministry and Africa too. All right. Let's get started on this. Um, so the uh, a Peter... Uh, he wrote things concerning the prophets of the Old Testament, right? That the spirit of Christ within them predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory that was to follow. Prophecy. Okay, so at times, these prophets spoke in the first person of going through experiences that, that never actually happened to them, but that did happen later in the life of Jesus. Prophecy. Okay, they described the, the first sufferings. These are Old Testament prophets. They described the first um, sufferings of the Messiah. And then the eternal glory into which he was to enter. Okay, so such predictions occur most frequently in, Psalm, in Psalms and in Isaiah, most of them. Okay, so David prophesied a lot about Jesus and so did Isaiah. Okay, so this uh, these questions are going to go through some examples of it. So I'm going to call the question out to you, and I want you to go and a answer these questions. You can answer them in the comments section if you want, but I always encourage y'all to have notebooks, one with where you're studying in, another notebook that I give you scriptures in, especially if you're Google Meters. Sometimes I throw them out here. Um, for you to dissect and to meditate on, not the hum meditation, but meditate means memorize them, study them, pray them to God, memorize them, get them into your heart. And then you'll have a notebook on prayers that you're requesting to God. Write down the date you prayed your prayer, your request, and write down the date he answered it and keep faith in between and you'll see God moving in your life. 
Okay, but in your study notebook, go ahead and grab that. And here's your first question. Number one, the answer is Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 3. Was the Messiah to be accepted or rejected by his own people? Number two is in John 1, 11 and John 12, 27 through 38. Did Israel as a nation accept or reject Jesus? What did Isaiah say? That he would be rejected by his own people? Go to John. Did that happen? Okay. Um, question number three is in Psalms chapter 41, verse 9. All predict, pro, uh, prophesying the Messiah. Okay, Psalms 41, 9, number three. By what kind of person was Messiah to be betrayed? What kind of person was going to betray the Messiah according to Psalms 41, 9? And number four in Mark 14, 10. Who betrayed Jesus in Mark 14, 10? Who betrayed him? You'll see these two questions go hand in hand. Uh, number five, Matthew 26, 47, and 50. Was this man that betrayed Jesus a friend of Jesus's? Number six, Zechariah eleven twelve. 12. For what price was Messiah to be betrayed? According to Zechariah eleven twelve, 12. The Messiah was to be betrayed for a certain price. And you go to number seven. The answer is in Matthew 26, 15, and the, the fulfillment. How much money did Jesus, a uh, betrayer, receive for betraying him? In Matthew 26, 15. Zechariah said he was going to be, be betrayed, the Messiah, for a certain amount of money. And in Matthew, tells you how much money this person betrayed Jesus for, which we know is Judas. Okay, it's fulfilled, 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 fulfilled. All right, moving on to number eight. It's in Zechariah eleven thirteen. What was to be done with the money of the Messiah's betrayal? What was to be done with the money of the Messiah's betrayal according to Zechariah eleven thirteen? Well, the answer is in Matthew 27, 3 through 7, because it happened. The question is, what was done with the money of Jesus' betrayal? In Matthew 27, 3 through 7, number 9. What was done with the money of Jesus' betrayal? Number 10, in Isaiah 53, verse 7, was Messiah to defend himself before his accusers? Number 11, how did Jesus react to his accusers? You'll find it in Matthew 26, 62 through 63. Going back to Isaiah and number 12, Isaiah 50, verse 6, was the Messiah to be beaten and spat upon? According to Isaiah 50, verse 6, was the Messiah to be beaten up and spat upon by his own people? Moving, answering that. Number 13, the answer is in Mark 14, 65 and John 19, 1. Name two ways in which Jesus suffered at the hands of his oppressors. Number 14 in Isaiah 53, 12. What kind of people were to be executed together with the Messiah? What kind of people were to be executed together with the Messiah? And again, in Daniel 9, 24, it tells you the Messiah will be cut off or killed 
before the destruction of the second temple. So Isaiah prophesied that there were going to be some other people getting uh, executed with the Messiah by his own people. Who were they? All right, moving on to number 15. Who were the two men crucified together with Jesus, according to Matthew 27, 38? Who were the two men crucified together with Jesus, just like Isaiah prophesied? And go to number 16. The answer is in Psalm. I mean, this is in Psalms 22, 16. Name two parts of the Messiah's body that David said were to be pierced. Name two parts of the Messiah's body that David said would be pierced in Psalms 22, 16. King David knew who the Messiah was. Anointed one. He's going to come and walk on this earth along with the people, be killed and rejected. Um, so here you go. Number 17. Luke 24. Um, verses 39 through 40 and John 20, 25 through 27. Um, was Jesus pierced in his hands and feet? Like David said he would be? King David? Remember in Psalms 22, 16, King David said the Messiah would be pierced in his hands and feet. Well, Luke and John right there. Number 17. Was Jesus pierced in his hands and feet like David said? Number 18. It's in Psalms 22, verse 18. What was to happen? What did King David say would happen to the Messiah's garments and clothing? Well, Go to number 19 in John 19, 23 through 24. What did the Roman soldiers do with the garments and tunic of Jesus? Go to number 20. It's in Psalms 69, 21. What did King David say, prophesy they were to give Messiah to drink in Psalms 69, 21? What did King David say they were to give Messiah to drink? Well, the answer is in John 19, 29, because it happened. What did they give Jesus to drink? Same thing King David said they would. Number 22 is in Psalms 34, 19 through 20. What did King David prophesy that could not happen to the Messiah's bones? Well, you'll find the answer in John 19, 33, 36, because it happened. Were the bones of Jesus broken? Were they? All right, that's enough for right now. So you're going to, as you read the Old Testament, y'all, you're going to find the prophecies fulfilled, 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 fulfilled in the new. By one man, Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. OK, and if you don't understand, he's supposed to come from the line of David. David was a, a king. You understand? We got to quit looking at things so physical. OK, he was of a virgin birth. Like the Bible prophesied. And as I told you, God can do whatever he wants to do. And God showed you that miraculous birth through Abraham and Isaac and Sarah. Yes, God can do miracles. He's a miracle working God. So it's like a like a superpower, a uh, prediction of that. God gave a miraculous birth. It wasn't a virgin birth, but at hey, at, at the old age that they were, it was a miracle, y'all. Okay? And God's showing that he can do this miracle birth too. But he was uh, to be of the line of King David. It doesn't mean a genealogy DNA line. It means a messianic line. He's a king. He was uh, like uh, adopted from Joseph, in other words, because it wasn't his biological son. But Joseph 
was from the line of King David. And now he's adopted into that family as a king because he is the king. It's a messianic line. Quit looking at physical stuff. Messianic line. And yes, he's the king of kings. King of kings. Adopted into a family that is of the line of King David. And that's what God is doing. That's what he sent. That's what he sent him Jesus for. To graft in the Gentiles. Salvation was first for the Jews. Okay. But then God read Romans chapter 11. God temporarily closed the people's eyes as Jewish people's eyes because they did not but reject him since the beginning. Disobey, 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 reject the Messiah, reject, still rejecting. God closed their eyes temporarily. He said, if you won't worship me, I'll make a rock cry out and worship me. So their eyes are temporarily closed. That's where they're like, he's the Messiah. He, 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 everywhere. Every generation, the different one. No, God don't work that way. God don't have to. Okay, there's one Messiah making two appearances, y'all. God is power. He's not some weak God. He's power. So he closed the eyes temporarily of his own people to graft in the Gentiles, adopt them into being a Jew. Because that's what he is. He's a Jew. He served at the temple. He sacrificed at the temple. He, he followed the laws. He followed the feasts. He is a Jew. He didn't give up who he was. He is the Jew. You understand? So when a Jewish person comes to Jesus as Messiah, you don't have to give up everything you already know. No. You're just adding to it. Now you don't have to. Now you can go straight to God. When you accept the Messiah, the only difference is you're still a Jew. You still know everything you know about the Old Testament. Everything stays the same, except for now you know who the Messiah is. And now you know you go through him to get your prayers heard from God. And now God, he, he gives you salvation, eternal life. I want y'all to understand this. Quit looking at the world so much, y'all. Quit, get your eyes off the world. Get your eyes on the things set above. Set your eyes above, up there, walking in God's will because you love God, doing everything you do for God to please him, honoring him, obeying him, talking to him, giving him thanks all the time. Even before you see anything happen, give him thank, thank him. Thank him for your hands working properly. Thank him for your feet working properly. Thank him for your children being uh, healthy. Thank you. Thank him for your wife or husband being healthy. Thank you for a happy marriage. Thank him for everything. Constant state of thanking him. And then talk to him. Ask him stuff when you need to. He's a God that answers prayers when you are abiding in him. Not away from him, in him. And he's a God of restoration. Even though in Romans 11, he closed the Jews' eyes temporarily as to who he is right now. is why they don't know, why they stay away from Isaiah 53. Why? They believe every prophet in the Old Testament is for that one chapter. Why? Because it speaks of that man, Jesus but so does David. So does their beloved King David. So does Zechariah. All of them. You understand? God is revealing himself, y'all, right now, who he really is. And I want you to, if you didn't see my video yesterday on the quantum, uh, go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. And when you come to Google Meet Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you are going to hear I'll be going through the temple, through the high priest, through the rituals they did that, that God said to do. God commanded it, right? 
how they had to get their uh, prayers heard by God, how they had to get forgiven for their sins, what they had to go through, the process, you understand? The sin offering. You're going to understand why he came here for you and is your sacrifice and how now we go through this high priest, the only high priest, the only one you can ever go through in history of mankind again. Since the day he died and resurrected, he showed you that when you serve me, this is what you're going to do. You're going to die a physical death. It's appointed once for man to die. Okay. But then I'm, he showed you that you're not going to, your body dies. You're not going to stay dead. You, who you really are, your spirit, your soul is going to go back to God when you accept him and his sacrifice, what he did for you. The only thing requires of you to believe. And that goes into many directions. That's loving him. When you believe, you love him. You thank him. A believer means you love him. You thank him. You're studying him. You're getting to know him. You're becoming his best friend, man. He's on your mind constantly. And you are doing the things he said to do faithfully because you love him. And witnessing to people who don't know him is part of that. Because what a greedy person you would be knowing that your friend does not know Jesus. He does not know the Savior. He don't know the Messiah. And you know that when he dies, he's not going back to God because that's the only way to God right there. So what a greedy, selfish person you would be to have a friend that does not know Jesus as a Messiah and you not tell them about it or try to introduce them to the only way to back to God. What a greedy, selfish person you would be because maybe you're scared to tell them about Jesus. You're scared to witness the truth. You're scared. So they get eternal separation from God. That's not fair to that person, y'all. They might get mad at you. They might think anything in the world about you, but that's still... God knows what you're doing and you know you're doing it for God and for that person. That's from your heart. You're giving that person your heart when you try to lead them to Jesus Christ, y'all. They may spit on you like they spit on him. They might drive some nails through your body like they did to him. They might beat you with a whip with cattails and weights and balls and nails and everything on it and, and shred you from front to back. That's what they did to him. But you know what he showed them in return? Love. And he's still giving them a chance today. He's giving you a chance today after all he went through. Because he loves you. And the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. The word Jesus means Messiah. Did you know that? Look it up. Yeshua. Yeshua. Is Messiah. He got the very name of who he is. The angel told Mary to name him that. All right, y'all. Let's show God. Let's show him. Let's not give him lip service, y'all. Don't give him lip service. Worship him in spirit and in truth and in every single way. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to your ministries that's helping you. Be faithful to the poor and be faithful to yourself. And you know what? Be faithful to other people. Don't be uh, stingy and not tell people about Jesus because you're afraid they might not like it. You're sharing with them love, y'all. Eternal life love. They may not appreciate it now, but when Jesus starts working on them and they accept him, they're going to be thanking you from the hilt. And then they're going to get their family in. And there you know, so many people we're helping bring back to God. We can't save them, but we sure is our job to show them the way. Because you know what's opposite God for eternity? Separation from God. Hell. And yes, that's a real place too. And we don't want anybody to go there. All right. Go ahead and do those questions. If anybody's going to write the questions in the comments section, like uh, Morgan or I forgot who I, who are John 14. Um, thank you so much for doing that. You don't have to. People can go back and pause the video. But thank you for your participation, y'all. Thank you for 
let me know I'm not standing up here wasting my time with you. That you guys just flying by some random video. This is coming from God. He wants you to get an understanding. That's what he wants you to get. Understanding of him. It's very important, y'all. Very important. All right. God bless you all. If you've sinned today, yesterday, whatever, just repent and mean it and, and then stop doing it. That's true repentance. Stopping doing that sin. He showed you 33 years how to live your life to please God. He's not leaving us dumb or ignorant, y'all. He showed us the way. He is the way. I am the life, the truth, and the way. I am. Follow me. Follow what I do. Follow what I showed you. All right. Anything y'all needs in the description on the videos. Thanks some of you so much. I pray for every one of you that have sent something to this ministry. I always do immediately. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for whoever you, and I name your name, bless their seeds, Lord. Bless their seeds, God. Bless their obedience. Thank you for doing so. And you know, he's got you in his hand when you obey him. Satan going to use that one thing. I'm telling you to keep you from God. Disobedience keeps you from God. You know that. You might be like, oh, I feel so good. I go to church last Sunday, y'all, and uh, the spirit hit me, and, and I'm praying my Bible. I'm praying, but are you doing, are you giving God what belongs to him? Are you doing that? Because that one thing will keep you from God, and that's what Satan's going to use most to keep you from God. Disobeying God separates you from him. You understand? Anything, in anything. But I know that's the main thing the devil's using out there in this world. Obey your God, y'all, and uh, even in, the, uh, in everything. Everything, y'all. Giving to your ministries that help you, which is giving back to God. And these ministries ought to better be helping the poor somewhere. And forgiving people that have hurt you and forgiving yourself. Is the, is, is the main things Satan's using to steal people from God. Don't let him do it. It's your choice. Okay. All right. God bless you all. I'll see some of y'all tonight at Google meets. Um, we might go over some of this tonight. I want to hear your answers. If you can't do it all, I understand, but we got some other things we're going over too. All right. See y'all tonight at 8 PM Eastern standard time. Again, anything you need is in the description. God bless you. The Lord keep you and your family. And just bless you. But you bless the Lord too. Bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within you. Bless his holy name. Everybody wants God to bless them. Why don't you bless the Lord? All right. God bless you all.